Thank you for listening to the weekly messages of New Providence Primitive Baptist Church. To subscribe to our podcast, hear other messages, or learn more about us, please visit nppbc.com. If you've got a burden today, we can help you with it. Um, I'm glad that I don't have to bear them alone. Uh, there's, there's some burdens that we must bear, but we don't bear them alone. We don't bear them without help. He is there to help us. He's promised to help us. There are things where he simply will say, cast it on me. God will help you carry it today. Grateful for those that will use this altar. Uh, use it all you need to. That's what it's there for. Uh, the, the shame is not using The shame's not using it. Amen. Right? It's, not, it's not going and finding the help that you need. Listen, the psalmist said he's a present help in the time of trouble. Whatever you need, friend, Jesus is the answer to it. Um, grateful to be here. This, I, I just appreciate everything the Lord's already done. Um, I, I'm going to share my heart this morning and, and just try my best to do the, the will of God. Turn with us, if you would, to Romans chapter 13. Um, we, we started with this thought this morning on the broadcast, and uh, I woke up with it, grateful for it, and uh, the direction was clear, and and I thank God for it. But um, I, it, for those of you that heard the broadcast this morning, you know, don't be alarmed. I, I I just preached point number one, and it took nearly an hour this morning. But but it's not the intent this morning. I don't think it'll take long. But I do think we need to hear the message. Um, that, that, you know, there, there's got to be action at some point, right? You, if, if you sit and stare at a snow cone, it's going to melt. Yeah. Right? You're going to have to grab that thing if you want some of it. Yeah. Right? Or it's yeah. going to disappear on you. Yeah. Right? It will go away. And there are opportunities that we have as the people of God to seize the moment, to experience the the goodness of God, but it is in that moment that you get it. And so I'm going to encourage you today. Listen, don't procrastinate. Amen. If you yeah. put off today what must be done today, you might end up in hell. Right. Uh, more people are in hell because they waited. Yeah. They put off coming to Christ. They found every excuse <laughs> of why they couldn't or shouldn't do business with God today, now. And people are in hell now because they resisted God in the moment that he was calling them. I don't know your heart today, but I'm compelled to say this. Friend, you're going to wait too long one day, and the opportunity to receive Christ as your own will have passed you by. He's no responsibility, friend, to offer you any more than one, mm-hmm. right? Based on his word, I'm certain you'll get one. But if you get more than one, it's just grace. Amen. It's just mercy that God extends to you one more time. And listen, procrastinating when it comes to something that is spiritual and eternal, friend, you might as well be playing with a loaded gun. It is a matter of life and death. Romans chapter 13 is where we'll begin reading this morning, beginning at verse number 11. Verse number 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. You hear him? The day is at hand. The morning is almost here. Let us, therefore, cast off the works of darkness. There is an action that must be employed. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us not, or let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Pray with us. Father, thank you for the opportunity. And I pray now the Spirit of God find its mark in every soul that every heart by this word would be pricked, challenged, opened, made aware, God, made alive to truth that opportunities to be born again are not based upon the receiver but upon the giver. Help us not to procrastinate the invitation to come to Christ that is being extended one more time today. We trust you, Lord, in the application of all that is good and holy. And all of this, we pray, brings glory to you, salvation to others, for we ask it in his name. Amen. Amen. Are you still with me? Yeah. All right. I remember in 1998, I'm pretty certain of the date because uh, Tennessee had won the national championship. I remember listening to that game, uh, listening to John Ward uh, broadcast that game. I could still listen to it today, even though I know the score in my mind. Um. But he called a news conference not long after that. And I, I remember knowing that, that really what he was going to say, I just didn't know how he would say it. Uh, to those that are, you know, Tennessee football fans, John Ward, as far as I'm concerned, is the best. It's always been the best in my mind. Uh, maybe because I grew up listening to him. But either way, I remember that, that I made certain that I could tune in to the, uh, to the press conference. Uh, was anybody alive and remember that other than me? That, it's me and Rick, all right, so we listened to it. And I, I remember the first thing that he said. He said, it's time. It was a really short press conference. That wasn't the only thing he said, but for the most part, that's all he said. He said, it's time. His time was done as far as broadcasting and uh, it stuck with me. Thought about it a lot of times. What the term itself means, it's time. You know, it means you've got to do something now. The time has come. The moment has come. It's arrived. It's here. I want to, I want to ask you this morning if you'll do business with God today. It's time. It's time we do business with God. It's, it's time that we opened our hearts to Christ today and settle what's unsettled. Make right what is wrong. Be restored or set free from the bondage that we're in. It's just time. Uh, I I, I can't tell you that there'll be tomorrow. I'd love to be able to promise you in some way or another that if you miss it this morning, we'll we'll come back tonight and you'll you'll get another shot at it. But I can't do that. The only time that I am certain of is the one you're breathing in right now. The only opportunity I know that you'll ever have to be born again if you're receiving that opportunity now via the Holy Spirit and conviction is right now. It's time. It's time that you did business with God. You've made excuses long enough about it. You've, you've been uncommitted to Christ. You've been on the outside looking in or whatever your situation may be. I just want you to know today that I believe it's time. What the Apostle Paul said was, as he said, it's high time. That's the way he said it. It's high time that we cast off the work of darkness and, and we put on the light of Christ. It's high time that we made up our mind who we're going to serve and we stop being halted between two opinions. It's time that we quit procrastinating what we know in our heart to be true and important and we allow the Spirit of God to transform us and make us new creatures in Christ Jesus. It's just time. I want to share 
just a few things this morning as quickly as I can, but I want to begin with this thought. It's time to consider. It's time that you, you think about this. One thing that people do, I believe, to avoid making a decision, which unfortunately is a decision itself, but people will refuse to think about eternity. They refuse to think about the fact that they will die one day, that there will be a day come that no doctor will save you, that nothing can be done or said or performed or, or, or administered that will keep you going. There is a day coming that you will expire in this world, and it does matter whether or not you're prepared. It matters in every way that can be considered. It is, by the way, the most important decision you'll ever make is about whether you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's time, friend, that you consider what's going on. The Bible said, the prophet Isaiah in chapter number 1, verse number 18, he said, come now, notice the time, it is now, come now, right now, he said, and let us reason together. I'd like to reason with you for just a moment. I'd like for anyone in the room just to really engage your mind. I'll get to the heart here in just a second. But would you engage your mind and think with me concerning the statistical information available about the death of human beings? Do you know that one out of every one dies? Would you consider this morning and just be reasonable as we talk about this that there is no one you know apart from the coming of the Lord Jesus in the rapture. There is no one that you know, that you love, that you have have been a part of in this that will not die. Anybody don't agree with the statistics? Don't you reasonable people think about it? Think about it. What do we know about death? We know it has no respect of persons. We we know that it doesn't matter to death whether you're old or young. It does not care. It doesn't matter if you're sick or healthy. Doesn't matter if you got a family or you're orphaned. Doesn't make any difference to death. It has no respect of persons. I want you to know that death has been on your trail ever since you breathed the breath in this world. You need to consider the truth, the fact that there is an end to your life down here. How about we consider this morning that according to the prophet Isaiah that there is a remedy that has been made for death. Did you know that death has been conquered? I assure you of this, you know no one down here who had the ability or has the ability to conquer death. The one thing that could not be overcome by humankind was to conquer death or hell. And I want to suggest to you today, consider this with me now. The Word of God clearly says that the reason Jesus came was to deliver sinners from hell. To save you and me. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to save you today. The Lord Jesus Christ gave himself on the cross a ransom for your sin debt and he died for you. But make known in your heart today, reason in your mind this morning, the Lord Jesus did not stay dead. He rose again. That changes everything. It's one thing for a man to say that he's dying for my sin, but it's another when he raises himself from the dead. I want you to consider today that the only means of you leaving this world alive is Jesus Christ. There is but one. Tell me another if there is another. There is but one way out of here alive. You say, preacher, you mean you're not going to die? 
Let me talk spiritually for a minute. I was dead at one point. The Bible said that I was dead in my sins and my trespasses. Let's be reasonable now and think about this. It says I was dead in my sins and trespasses. You today may be here and may be dead spiritually. You may not know who the Lord Jesus Christ is in your heart. You may have never been quickened by the Holy Spirit of God and made alive, but I have. I've been to Calvary and I've been changed. Amen. That man that was dead when I believed in Jesus Christ was raised in the newness of life and I will never perish. They'll throw this corpse in a box and put it in the clay and cover it up and that will be all about him. But I am forever alive. You say, how come? Because that's why he came. Was to defeat death and to let me live. Let's be reasonable about this. Who do you know is going to be able to save you in that moment? Who can you call on, sister, when your heart is fixing to beat for its last time? I'm suggesting you today and asking you to engage your brain for just a minute and let's reason about this. Do you know any other way to leave here alive? And I think Isaiah was completely relevant when he said, come now then. Let us reason together. Let's be reasonable. Just think about this for a moment. Though your sins be as scarlet. Oh, he said, I know a way they can be made white as snow. Isaiah said, listen, let me reason with you for just a moment. Though they be red like crimson, he said, they can be made white as wool. Isaiah said, I know a way. I know one that can help you with this dilemma of death and how that we can get out of this world and into the next one and be alive forevermore. It's Jesus, friend. He's the only way. Let's be reasonable. You're sitting there today and you're trying to procrastinate one more time. You're trying to say, no, not today, Lord, one more time. Let's be reasonable about this. How do you know you have one more time? Someone, can you honestly raise your hand and say, I know absolutely for sure that I have another chance. I will get back here tonight. I will be here tonight. Without fail, I can and promise you I will have one more opportunity to come into the house of God and to experience the drawing of God. I say to you, you're foolish this morning. You are not being reasonable. You have no promise of tomorrow. It's time to consider the truth. It's time to consider the truth about Christ. Let me be clear. Jot it down if you're a note taker. Jesus is the only way. I don't have any other message to share with you today other than Jesus is your only hope. He is your only plea. He is your only only opportunity. He is the only way apart from Jesus Christ. You are going to die and never die. You're going to be in hell and in the pits of that place, in the torments of that place where the fire is not quenched and the worm dieth not. You will never perish in hell. You will die and never die. Say, preacher, how do I get out of this dilemma? I'm trying to be reasonable. I'm trying to give you the logical and the rational. I'm trying to give you the information that is known and proven. How many would say right now that what the preacher's saying, right, he's right, he's right? How do you know that, son? How do you know I'm right? You got an experience, you're saying you got an experience with this deal. You're saying that you was dead one time and now you're alive too? Hmm, that's two of us. Anybody else? 
Anybody else know what I'm talking about? You say, I've been there, I was dead, but now I'm alive. Hey, man, was that you, Lenny, when you were looking? Say, I can't see. There's a fog around me. I'm going down. But did he save you that day? He's the only way. I contend today, let's be reasonable about this. Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. What are you waiting on this morning? Hey, man, preacher, I'm not ready. You better fool you on that. You better get ready because you ain't got the promise not of one more breath, one more second, one more day, one more sunshine. You don't have the promise of anything. Let's be reasonable. You know I'm right. You know that's true. And you know you need Jesus right now. It's time to do business with God. Say when? Today. I don't care if we have to be here till 6 o'clock tonight. We'll lay with you. Amen. We'll lay with you. We won't let you go. Amen, because I'll tell you right now, you need Jesus more than you need breath or, or, or a tater. You need Jesus more than you need any sustenance of this world. Let's be reasonable about this. When it comes to life or death, living eternal, there ain't anything greater than that subject, that topic, that, that note in my life. It has to be settled. The account must be reckoned. And the only way you're going to escape the pits of hell's flame is to get saved today. Saved. It's time to consider this. It's time to consider it. But number two, there's a time for thinking, but then there's a time for doing. Right? There's a bunch of people who thought about getting saved that are in hell this morning. Right? right? They thought about it, and they thought about it, and they thought about it, and then they died, right. having never done it, having never obeyed the call of Christ to surrender themselves and be born again. You say, preacher, I don't know how to get saved. Let me tell you how simple it was. I was nine years old and had no idea myself. Right? So don't feel bad. You ain't alone. I didn't know how to get saved. But I tell you who helped me with that. It wasn't my mama. It wasn't my daddy. It wasn't my neighbor. It wasn't my friend. But as I was sitting there minding my own business, the Holy Spirit showed up and said, you got a problem. Amen. When he revealed unto me at nine years old that I was lost and without a Savior, there's something hit me. The realization that he was right and I was wrong, that if I died in that condition, I was going to hell. You say, preacher, all that happened to you when you was nine years old? Hey, it happened in two minutes or less. I got so lost. Hey, man, you couldn't have beat me to hell at that moment. I was so lost at that moment when the Holy Spirit of God revealed unto my conscience, hey, man, that I was undone. I began to consider the remedy for my condition and determined in a little nine-year-old mind that Jesus was my only hope. Amen. Jesus was my only hope. But I could have sit there and thought about it and thought about it and missed the opportunity. But instead of thinking about it anymore, hey man, I took one little step out of that back bench right there. Hey man, and I made my way around the side of the building over here. Yeah, I was in this building. Had different carpet. Had different upholstery. But I was in this building and I walked right around through there and my mother was sitting right there where Brenda is. I slid in behind her, big old tears running down my face. By that time, she looked over to me and said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm lost and I need to be saved. And she said, well, I can't help you with that. And she stepped out of the pew and made me an opportunity. I believe I got saved about right there. I believe I got saved when I quit thinking and started doing, when I started acting on what I knew and started believing on who had come brother he saved me before I got to the altar I believe Amen. I believe it's time that we do something your time of procrastination friend time's up on you hear me now this is a warning time is up for you you better call on God today while he's near Isaiah would say this in Isaiah 55, verse number one. He said, oh, everyone that thirsteth. Oh, everyone that thirsteth. Are you thirsty this morning? You know in your heart, you know in your spiritual depravity, you're about to drop, you're about to thirst to death. You know it. Let's be reasonable now. You know it. Quit denying these truths. You know in your heart that you, you're absolutely void of Christ in your heart and in your life and that you need to be born again. You know that right now. And you know you're thirsty for God today. Yeah. Isaiah said, oh, he said, everyone that thirsteth, everybody that thirsteth, 
He said, what he said, he said, come ye to the waters. Huh? I'm asking you to do something this morning. Amen. There's more to that. There's three more verses. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to deal with this one thing. It's time to do something this morning. It's time to do business with God. Amen. You, you can sit and, and say, well, boy, that was a good message. Well, you can still go to hell. You can still lost and die without God, amen, with the full knowledge, Lenny, that you was lost the whole time. When you get into hell, you won't blame God. I guarantee you, friends, you won't be pointing a finger at God and say, well, he never gave me a chance. I want you to know today he's giving you a chance. If he ain't giving you 10 already, he's giving you one this morning. And, brother, you need to get saved before it's too late. It's time to do something. There's time to consider. Now, I don't know about you, but I only spent about 10 minutes on considering it. I spent an hour earlier this morning trying to preach that one thought that it's time, but you better quit thinking about it and start doing something or you're going to miss the boat. Amen. It's one thing to say, hey, I'd like to take a ride on that boat. I'd like to be present when that thing leaves from here. I'd like to have the assurance, amen, that I'm going to be on that gospel ship that's headed to heaven. I'd like to know that. Brother, you can sit there and think about it until it pulls out of the dock and you can swim as hard as you want to. You'll never catch it. I say it's time we do something. Oh, Isaiah said, oh, all ye that are thirsty. He said, come ye to the waters. I'm just asking you to do something this morning. It's time you do something. Listen, you ain't never going to get saved unless you do something with the offer. Amen. I can stand here and offer it to you all day long, but it indeed till you say, I receive it. I want to be saved. He ain't going to make you get saved. He ain't going to make you sign up for Christ. He's not going to somehow manipulate you or, or trick you into anything. Listen, if you get born again, you'll go with your eyes wide open. If you get saved by the grace of God, you'll do it with the full knowledge that you was lost and you asked him. It's time we do something. There's a time for thinking about it, and I think you've think about it long enough. I think if you keep thinking about it, you're going to be in hell thinking about it. It's time to do. Oh, he said, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. You say, preacher, what in the world do I need to do? What do I need to do? Hey, the message has been clear. Come. That's all. Come on. You need me? Come on. So I can't figure this out. There's got to be more to it. Mm -mm. Just come on. Come. Oh, to everyone that thirsteth, come to the waters. That's all you got to do. You know how you get a real drink? Pick it up. Now, you can think about it all day long, but you're thirsty still. You can consider it with all your heart, but you know what? You're still thirsty. You know why? Because you ain't never done it. You ain't, done, you ain't put it to the lip. Your spiritual thirst is not going to be quenched by just showing up at the house of God every now and then. What you're thirsting for is not religion. It can't save you. What your soul is longing for is to live. Christ only is the life. We need to consider. There's a time to consider, but there's also a time to do. A time to do. But then we find in the book of Matthew, and lastly, I'm going to end to this. I I just wanted to make make it clear. There's a time for Jesus. You say, preacher, I I I just need the simple answer. Right? I'm I'm a little confused about what it is you're asking me to do. 
it's, it's time that you accept Jesus as your Savior. That's all you got to do. I, I know it sounds simple, but there ain't, there ain't a person in here would tell you it's any harder than that. What happened to me happened to her and happened to her and her and him. Every one of us that had been born again, it all happened the same way. We recognized by the means of the Holy Spirit that we was lost. We considered the options and recognized also that Christ was the only way. And, for, and at that point, we had an opportunity to do something, and that was to receive Christ as our Savior. Let me tell you what Matthew eleven twenty eight said, and these are in red letters in your Bible. You'll find Jesus himself making the statement. He said, come unto me. Now we're getting specific about what to do. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What you have to do is to come to Christ. You can't come to the preacher. You can't come to the deacons. You can't come to anybody else in the service. Everybody in here would like to help you if you need help. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but hear me now. Ultimately, you got to go to Jesus. The only real thing I can do is is just point. Point. All I can really do is tell you who you need is Jesus. I know who you're looking for. He's here. He's Jesus. All you got to do is come unto him. You say it can't be that simple. It is that simple. Hear me now. If if the Holy Spirit of God has, has touched your heart, maybe you ain't slept the last few nights. Maybe you're uncomfortable still as you sit here this morning and you reason in your mind whether or not you're prepared for eternity. May I say to you today, if the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you, you have an opportunity to do something this morning and that is to receive Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come get a song. I want to stop right here and just give an invitation. It's time. It's time, preacher. I'll come back tonight. Chances are the devil will do something in your life and you won't even get to come back tonight even if you want to. Opportunities pass by people every day. And those people unknowingly before the next day have ended up in a funeral home somewhere. Had no idea they was going to die. So preacher, if I'd have just known I was going to die, I done told you you was going to die. What about that did you not understand? You are going to die. That ain't the question. The question is what are you going to do with the offer to live? Because I can assure you, when you open your eyes in hell, you will not be able to say, I didn't have an opportunity. The grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world. What are you going to do with Jesus today? It's time to do business with God. You ready? I can't do it for you. I'll try to do it with you, but I can't do it for you. You ready? It's time. It's high time. It's high time that you wake out of your sleep. Recognize the devil's had you slumbering in the wickedness of this world long enough. The days of opportunity of your life are quickly passing you by. You have no promise of one more opportunity. You need to get saved. It's time to do business with God. Would you stand as we sing this song? If there's somebody beside you that's in your way, would you just touch them on the shoulder? You just touch them on the shoulder right now. They'll know what to do. They'll get out of your way. 
so that you can make a commitment in your heart to Christ, so that you can do something finally in your life and quit thinking about it and allow Christ to make you a new creature to give you everlasting life. The only way is through Jesus. It's time for Jesus. It's time for Jesus. Your life has gone long enough without him. It's time for Jesus. As we sing, I'll give you a simple invitation. Come. That's what Jesus said. Come.